I hope you like tomatoes because this video is going to be all about tomatoes and maybe a little bit more. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be doing a good bit of tomato harvesting. We're starting to see some early results from our determinate tomato trials behind me here. We're going to kind of assess those five varieties. Look at the tomatoes, look at the plants, see if we can pick any winners and losers so far. Then we're going to jump over to our indeterminate or heirloom tomatoes. Got several of those that we need to harvest and take a look at. And then we also got to trim our basil. We've got flowers everywhere. I'm going to show you the easy way we trim back the basil to make a nice little flush hedgerow. So in this plot, we have not quite two full rows of hybrid determinate tomatoes we have five different varieties in here some we've grown before some we haven't grown before that we're trying out and we're starting to see some differences there you can see some of them look worse than others starting to see some fruits getting red on some of these like this beautiful looking tomato right there so it's time for a little comparison between these varieties so we have 25 determinate tomato plants here, five for each variety that we planted. Let me go through the varieties real quick. The two that we have grown before that we know we really like are Red Snapper and Roadster. This is my third year growing Red Snapper. It's always done well for me. My second year growing Roadster, things are looking pretty good with it so far. The new ones we've tried this year or are trying this year would be Rambler, Thunderbird and then Grand Marshal. Now because of the bushy growth habit of these plants and the way we trellis them with the Florida weave trellis here, it's kind of hard to tell where one plant ends and the next plant starts. But if we look down here at the base of the soil we can kind of see there's one, two, three, four, five as we work our way on down. So on this row here, this full 30 foot row, starting out we've got five plants of red snapper and then in the middle here we've got five plants of roadster and then down on the end there we have five rambler plants and then on this kind of shortened row here we have five thunderbird plants and five grand marshal plants so what we want to do today is take a look at the fruits from each variety and also assess the plants from each variety see if some plants seem to be more hardy more disease resistant than others now with these hybrid determinate tomatoes i will pick these on the pink side so we don't wait till they turn completely red to pick them i don't want to be out here picking them every single day so if they've turned the least little bit i'll go ahead and pick them We'll lay them on the grass, separate each variety, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so I picked anything that was starting to turn, and we've got them laid out here in little groups. We've got Thunderbird, Grand Marshal, Red Snapper, Roadster, and then Rambler. Now, before we take a look at these groupings per variety, something to consider. We've already been harvesting some of these. Brooklyn came out here earlier today and got three or four really nice ones for lunch. So the number of tomatoes per variety may not be completely accurate. Something we'll take a look at, but we have to keep that kind of in the back of our minds that we've already been getting some of these. So I probably should have made name tags for these, but we'll go over them one more time so we can remember what is what. Over here we've got Thunderbird on the end. Then we've got Grand Marshal, Red Snapper, Roadster, and then Rambler. If we take a look at Thunderbird here on the end, it looks to be one of the least productive varieties as far as early production goes. Now that doesn't mean that it won't catch up later. Some varieties just produce earlier than others, but we're not getting very many tomatoes off that variety quite yet. And the tomatoes we are getting are just kind of average size, not super, super big, as we'll see with some of these other varieties. So nothing super impressive so far there. We'll just have to keep an eye on that variety as the season progresses. Then we've got Grand Marshal here, which as I'll show you in a minute, are probably my least impressive looking plants. 
but they are loaded down with tomatoes so this is a very early producer it seems loaded down not really big tomatoes but some nice looking tomatoes there some of those early ones have been kind of wrapped up in the bottom of that florida weave and they'll have some little marks on them and stuff they still taste just fine we're getting a lot of production from that grand marshal variety so far moving on down the line here we've got our red snapper and this variety as we can tell here if we back up a little bit produces the biggest tomatoes of any of these varieties and that has been the case in any trials i've done with this variety red snapper just produces monsters those there are all pretty good sized tomatoes you see there fits in my hand that's a nice one so really big tomatoes from red snapper production is just about average compared to these others it's not a real early producer but the one good thing about it is that it makes some monsters and then fourth in line here we have our roadster variety which along with the grand marshal over there seems to be one of the most productive early varieties so we've gotten a lot of tomatoes off this variety here so far not massive ones we did find last year we got some bigger ones later in the season these are kind of just average or maybe a little bit below average but lots of good early production from this roadster variety and then last in line here we have the rambler now the rambler seems to make some pretty good sized tomatoes pretty close to what red snapper is putting out not getting a lot of early production on these reminds me a lot of thunderbird down there as far as how many tomatoes we're getting early but i am liking what i'm seeing as far as the size on this rambler variety so hopefully that gives you some good insight into fruit size and early fruit production amongst these five varieties here now let's take a closer look at the plants and see which plants seem to be doing the best now this one's a little harder to tell any differences i can tell you that the best looking plants we have is the red snapper variety here that's the tallest plants the most lush plants no real signs of any disease issues on those our roadster plants here are not as tall as the red snapper which is kind of expected red snapper is the tallest determinate hybrid i've ever grown but the roadster plants they look okay not fabulous at the bottom there but that's kind of expected at this point in the year with the heat we've been having those look okay and then the rambler plants down here they're not very very tall but they look okay as well but the two varieties are giving us some issues as far as the plants go would be the thunderbird here and then the grand marshal down there it isn't every single plant from each of these two varieties as you can see a couple of those there look okay some of those here look pretty pitiful still going to get a good many tomatoes off those plants but we are seeing some notable issues there from thunderbird let me slide down here and i'll show you grand marshall so a few of these grand marshall plants like that look pretty good but a few of them like this look pretty pitiful as i mentioned still loaded down with tomatoes there but something to consider the plant height on a few of these and those disease issues so seeing those differences in plant health kind of got me thinking okay what do thunderbird and grand marshall have in common and then what does red snapper roadster and rambler have in common it can't just be the fact that they're planted on different rows now i knew all these tomatoes had a pretty good disease resistant package but not all of them are resistant to the same diseases so digging a little deeper i found that thunderbird and grand marshall the two that are giving us the most issues are not resistant to tomato spotted wilt virus or ts wv and that's one we have a lot of issues with down here in the south the other three rambler roadster and red snapper are tswv resistant that's the only big differentiating factor i can find and that is what i'm blaming the difference in plant performance on so if we take all that information looking at the plants looking at the fruits what can we come up with as far as some early not final some early conclusions 
this could very well change in the next few weeks but just early analysis what are we thinking comparing these five varieties so early conclusion number one red snapper is doing great as it always seems to do for us not the most tomatoes although it could be because i think we've already picked several big ones from that red snapper portion of the row but just looking at what we've got now maybe not the most productive variety as far as number of tomatoes go but the biggest tomatoes and the best looking plants red snapper is a good one for us again this year second early conclusion just like we saw last year roadster is a very good early producer and by looking at the tomatoes we have left on the plants, we'll get some bigger size out of those as some of those kind of second round of tomatoes start to ripen. The roaster's doing well for us, plants look good, and we're getting a lot of good early production. My third early conclusion, Grand Marshall seems to be a really productive variety. It is loaded down with tomatoes. The plants aren't as vigorous as something like a red snapper, but the production may be able to overcome that. It may produce so many more tomatoes that that kind of decline in plant health really doesn't matter a whole lot. So I'm keeping a close eye on Grand Marshall. Got a lot of good early production from it. Yeah, we got some plants looking rough, but it is just loaded down with tomatoes. Fourth early conclusion on these determinate trials here. I'm not that impressed with Thunderbird so far. It doesn't have good early production, the fruits don't look very big, and the plants don't look that great. Our mind could change as the season progresses, but right now, I'm not impressed with Thunderbird, and if I had to make a call right now, it wouldn't be one that I would grow again. And lastly, my fifth early conclusion has to do with Rambler, and I'm just gonna say the jury's still out on Rambler. I'm getting some nice sized tomatoes there, and the plants are looking good, but I don't have a lot of early production, so we're just going to have to see what we get there. It's kind of in between the really good ones and something like a Thunderbird. It's kind of sitting in the middle right now, so the jury's still out. I'll keep you updated on that one. So now let's see if we can harvest some of these indeterminates here, which aren't near as productive as those determinants, for us at least. But man, they sure are pretty, and they are really, really tasty. And if you've been keeping up with these indeterminate tomatoes with us, you might remember I told you I did bury a fish, pretty decent sized fish, beside one of these plants here. I wasn't going to tell you which one it was until the end of the season, but I'll give you a hint. So the plant that had the fish buried next to it is on this front row right here. And it's not either of the ones on the end. Somewhere along the row here i can't tell you which variety yet can't tell you which one it is but as we look at these you can guess in the comments below which one has the fish buried beside it so let's take a closer look at these and we'll start out with these first four here which are the paul robeson variety really happy with how the plants have been performing on these really happy with the taste of the tomatoes they don't make real big maters or they haven't so far but these are really really tasty and they seem to be really productive for us that one there doesn't have any on it that's ready but as you can see we're loaded up pretty good a couple of those are kind of ugly which is what we expect with some of these heirloom varieties but really happy with mr robeson so far and then the next variety we have here is the Dr. Wachee's Yellow, one I haven't grown before, much like the Paul Robeson. I haven't even tried one of these yet, but looky, looky here. We've got three of them right there that look absolutely beautiful, and I think we're going to go ahead and snag those today. Some of these get really, really big. Check out that guy right there. That is a monster tomato. Then moving on, we've got a variety called Georgia Streak, which I wasn't planning on growing this year until we got a free seed packet in our seeds and such order. And so decided to plant some. Haven't tried these yet either, but we got one there that looks like it's worthy of a taste test here in a minute. And then lastly on this row, we've got this variety called Big Zack. And we're growing this one because this is one of the ones that Eddie over at Poor Boy's Little Homestead wanted to grow as a part of our Big Mater competition. 
and I'm looking around and seeing if we got any big mater candidates and that one there that was absolutely huge that one might be a good entrant into the competition not a lot of these have turned ripe yet got a few small ones there we can try but I'm going to hold out hope for that monster right there maybe we can get close to two pounds with that one on this back rows where we've lost several plants so we only got two plants of the german johnson variety here been eating a good many of those off the bottom there that plant there we've harvested all of the first fruit production on it those are really tasty haven't really got any big ones yet those are really good and then we've got our kellogg's here they were also growing as a part of that big mater competition those two ripe ones there look pretty good but i think some of those others there might be a little bit bigger i we'll have to check the weight on those once they ripen up a little bit more see if we've got anything close to a pound and a half some smaller ones right there but man those are tasty next along the line we have our giant crimson tomatoes here we have three plants of this variety that made it and these three plants actually look pretty dang good now this is the variety that in my gardener has some old old seeds and is trying to bring back and i'm not sure why it's called giant crimson there's nothing giant about them tomatoes they're kind of like little salad tomatoes they are quite tasty and they are very very productive they're just not giant now these on this plant here look to be a little bit bigger you can see there's a ton of them there they're a little bit bigger than those other plants but still nothing giant about them and then last but certainly not least is this rose variety that a viewer sent us and not sure what happened to that plant there but i think it's toast still got some nice fruits ripening up on the bottom those two plants there look pretty dang good tried one of these the other day and it was absolutely delicious so i'm pretty pumped about this variety here and i'm liking what i'm seeing and tasting so far from these so as we were going around looking at all those i harvested all the ones that looked close to being ripe i'll show you what they all look like when they're laid out so we've got a bunch of beautiful tomatoes here all eight varieties on display we'll start out here with the paul robeson you can see that one kind of has those green shoulders on it but even with the green shoulders they'll still be kind of dark and ripe on the bottom then we've got the dr wachi's yellow nice big tomato there we've got the georgia streak there Another nice big tomato looks a lot like the Dr. Wachi's. Here's our big Zach tomatoes, although not very big yet. The ones on the vine look a lot bigger. Move back down here, we have our Kellogg's breakfast, which are beautiful as always and tasty as always. We've got our giant or not so giant crimson, very productive, just not very big. These rose maters here, absolutely beautiful and nice size on those. And then the German Johnsons here, didn't have much to pick there because we've been working on those pretty hard. Now after harvesting all these maters, it would only be proper for me to eat one of these right now as a snack. The problem is deciding which one to eat. They all look so good. This here, Big Zach Mater looks mighty, mighty tasty and I haven't tried one of those yet. But this rose mater here looks absolutely perfectly ripe. So I think I'll save this one right here for a sandwich later. And since we still have some more work to do, I'll snack on this small one right here. Now you can wash your maters if you want to before you eat them. But I know what's been sprayed on my maters. And it ain't nothing that I'm worried about. So I'm just going to wipe it off of my shirt here. And we're going to dig in. Mmm. That gum mouth's good. Look at there. Mm, don't get much better than that. Really don't even need any salt and pepper with this rose variety. How about make it cuss? That's so good. I believe about two more bites to get it. Well, I believe we got all the goody out of that one right there. Now I got a mater mustache. That'll be all right. All right, now that we've been sufficiently nourished, Let's work on this basil. Now you may remember back when we planted this, 
in the spring I told you that growing this much basil and especially growing a double row of it wasn't going to make much sense until it got up and going and we got it looking like a hedgerow. Today it's going to start making a little more sense. So we've got enough basil here to feed South Georgia and North Florida. Got some Genovese, got some Thai basil, and we got some lemon basil at the front of the row. Now you probably already know this, but when basil starts flowering like this, you just come in here and pluck off these flower heads. That'll make the plants get more bushy and produce more leaves and just keep growing and growing and growing. But that's entirely too much basil to pick off all those blooms by hand. So instead, we're gonna do it this way. Let me show you just how easy it is. All right, all right, all right. And that's how we do it, quick and easy. Now I do have some gas powered hedge trimmers that I use on our Confederate Jasmine by the house, but I don't like using those on my basil. I'd rather use these little hand shears right here. Granted, I wouldn't want to do a whole field of basil with these, but for this little 30 foot double row, it's actually quite enjoyable. Now, in addition to being able to make lots of pesto and eat all this basil, the bees absolutely love this stuff. Now, they might be mad for a couple days since I cut all the blooms off, but there'll be more blooms coming along, and they're all the time in here feeding on this stuff. So, brings in pollinators, brings in beneficial insects. You gotta have a row of basil in your garden. Even if you got a little sliver of space, I'd highly recommend planting a double row. The smell is amazing. Pesto is amazing and the bees find it amazing. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Good to go and get that basil trimmed up, getting some of those beautiful indeterminate heirloom tomatoes harvested and also doing an early comparison on our hybrid determinate trials. And if you've grown or you're growing any of those hybrid determinate varieties that we have planted, let me know how they're doing for you. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Be sure to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. Lots of good stuff over there, including some hats, shirts, recipes, recommended products, and more. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life